Hi everyone, John here and welcome back to another Topo Talk. On the 3D Modeling Discord server, the question of cutting in insets into curved objects has been coming up a fair bit lately. So I thought I'd cover that in this session. And specifically, we're going to focus on these kind of shading errors. If we have a look at the wireframe here, you can see the geometry actually looks pretty good. It's all quads and I have no problem with that but we still have a really ugly shading error and they're quite difficult to get rid of. So let's talk about a couple of different approaches for this. Just going to turn that one off and turn this one on. So here's a version that doesn't have any bevels. Now that last example was under subdivision and generally all of the tutorials that I do are about subdivision modeling. But when you're modeling, you need to ask yourself, do I actually have to subdivide this object? And that's particularly important when you're working with these kind of curved objects. I've got the edges selected here. If I just go Control B here in Blender and just add in a little bevel in there and just hide that. You see that actually looks really good. And depending on how close you're going to be, that may be all you need. You probably don't need to subdivide that. Obviously, it depends on how many verts you have on your initial cylinder. If you don't have enough, then you're going to see faceting. And that also depends on how far away you are from the object. It's a really easy trap to fall into when you start sub D modeling to think everything has to be sub D modeled when it really doesn't. You really should consider right up front whether your object does indeed have to be put into a subdivision surface modifier. And these kind of hard surface bold style objects often really don't need subdivision. So that's the first thing to consider. All right, so let's say we decided that we were gonna subdivide this. So I'll just put that bevel on again. And let me just very quickly actually turn on my screencast keys, because I've been asked to do that. Okay, so control B is going to bevel this. And if I hit the O key, notice how I can change the mitre, the outer mitre. So I want that one there, arc. I'll just bring that like that. It's going to hold down P, drag that to the right, so I get a shape of one. That's a solid bevel in Cinema 4D. And if I hit A again, I can just readjust the size. So so if we go for that, and let's see, we'll just take a look at our subdivision. I'll just bring it down to one and one. And just come over to these normals and auto smooth and just increase that. Okay, so from a distance, that doesn't look too bad. As we get closer, you can start to see here's that little error popping up. And keep in mind that we have a big end gone here. You probably want to come in and put that edge in there and that gives you two quads. And this is where the problems start to happen. It's not too bad, but depending on how many verts you have in your cylinder, the length of this particular edge can really start to cause those long stretched issues like we saw in the previous example. Let me just turn that on. Notice also in this example that I have the bevel slightly tighter as well. So keeping a slightly looser bevel helps as well. Another trap to fall into is to try and make everything super tight. And like I said, it really depends on how close you're going to be to your object. Let's come back to this other one. You can see that's a little bit looser. Obviously, it's not going to be a problem on these flat areas. I'm just going to bring this here. Obviously, that makes a pole there. But if we hide that, you can see there's definitely no issues on flat surfaces. It's just these curved areas. So if it's really vital that you have no shading errors here. I mean, you could get away away with this depending on you know what angle you're at, 
how far away you are from it, that could be enough for you. But if it was really vital, if you were up really close and at a certain angle like that, then you might have to go slightly higher poly. So let's undo that again. And first of all, I'm going to quickly double the amount of geometry by subdividing this to a level of one. So I'll just quickly just hold down Shift E and just drag to the right, and that'll give me a mean crease of one. I'm just going to check that. And uh, item, yeah, mean crease of one. And come over to my sub D and just apply that. Let's just make sure that's a mean crease of one. Try that again. Apply. Yeah, see I had a mean crease of 0.99 and it was adding a little bit of rounding in there, which is no good. Something to keep an eye on. All right, so we've doubled the poly count. Doesn't matter about that bottom one. I'm just going to select everything and just bring that back down to zero. All right, so let's try it again. What I'll do is just come up to select and choose select sharp edges like that. Control B and drag that out again like that. So now I don't have to take that edge quite as far out into the curvature of this object. I can probably just come up now and easily just terminate these. And this one here as well. Like that. So let's take a look at this under subdivision. Just add a sub D surface. And we'll just adjust the normals. The auto smooth, sorry. Okay, so how does that look? So you can see it's still got an error. Let's take a look down here and I'm just going to come over and turn that on see how that's poking out when you bevel especially when you bevel uh, using a shape of one doing that kind of solid bevel you can see how the geometry doesn't always behave the way you expect. I'm just going to get rid of that and come up to normal. Maybe I can pull this up a bit. You don't really want to be coming in here and making these kind of manual adjustments. It's not ideal. So it's still there. It's a little bit closer. Let's just try something else. Let's undo. Control B to bevel. And I'm going to just hold down P and I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. See if that actually helps. Once again, we need to come over to our auto smooth. Let's increase that and probably come over and Add the subdivision surface. Ah, so that's actually a lot better. So by not having that bevel shape of one, we're actually doing ourselves a favor and it actually still looks pretty good from a distance. It's a little bit still in there. But that definitely helps. So a higher poly count and just changing the way we approach the bevel. Okay, let's try another way. I'm going to bevel once more. And I'm not going to add that extra edge. Maybe something like that. So obviously I have an end gone there, 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 and there. And now what I'm going to do is just apply that subdivision surface at a level of one. 
Uh -huh. Take a look at that. So by applying that subdivision surface at a level of one, it's transformed those n-gons into quads. And it's done a much better job of keeping it flat than the actual bevel modifier did. So let's take a look at that again under sub D. Get down to one. Obviously that's very soft. Let's go adjust the normals. But that error, that shading error is basically gone now. And, you know, if you're going to be this far away from it, then it still looks pretty good. It's really easy to over sharpen stuff, especially as a beginner. If we did need to sharpen this a little bit, we could always just alt click, GG to slide, and just slide that in a little bit. You can see it is a little, still a little bit flat there. And we could. Slide that out a little bit as well. We could slide this as well. Just to tighten that up a bit. So it's not quite as tight as the previous examples, but we've also no longer got any shading errors. What about if we just turn that off for a moment? And just grab these, bring that down. And bring that in. Let me just grab these verts as well. And I can sharpen it up a little bit more. But the key here is having that end gone to start with, and then subdividing to a level of one. Just going to undo once more. If we were to bevel this and just add that extra loop in by rolling the mouse wheel, like that, watch what happens when I subdivide this. We get this problem here. And let's see. If we just increase normals again, and once again add a sub D surface, how does that look? So we are starting to introduce a little bit of a problem there. So I wonder if there's a way that we can just rework that topology a little bit. What about if we were to add a cut down in there, get rid of those, this is going to cause other issues if I really wanted to have quads here. Let's have a look and see how that looks. I mean, it's, it's hardly changed it at all. Maybe it's added a little bit more of a shading issue there. So I wouldn't go that route. That's overcomplicated that way too much. Let's just do it once more. I'll just undo once more and just try one other thing. Let's go uh, Shift E and just get that main crease up to one. Just make sure that's fully one. I don't want that one. Okay. Apply and select it all. Still pressing Control A for all. Get rid of that. 
Okay, so select sharp edges, control B, something quite small there, like that, and add a sub D surface. Obviously, this is going to increase the poly count quite a lot. Apply. And let's see how this looks. So we'll come and add one more sub D surface. Down to one. And just increase that auto smooth. And yeah, it's pretty perfect now. We haven't got any issues there at all. Obviously that's increased the poly count quite a lot. Um, I just wanted to go just one more level up just to see how that would look. And here we're talking something that has to be subdivided and you know it's a hero shot that you've got to get up super super close. And the funny thing is it doesn't look a lot different from the very original example that we just beveled and didn't subdivide. So once again it all depends on how the object is going to be viewed how close you are, you know, I guess the texturing as well. It really pays to spend a little bit of time considering where the object is going to be used before you even start modeling. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully that's been useful. Be sure to leave an observation or a question if you have one. For now, this is John. Have fun, enjoy your modeling, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.